Okay. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I hope that I don't sound too congested right now. I, uh, I, I caught like a really bad flu, uh, right before I got on my plane, uh, to, to come to Cape Town. So, uh, I've, I've just been like asleep for the last 24 hours. So, but I'm Probably not a bad thing. It's, this is, this is yeah. a good, a good thing to do before you go and bully yourself on stage for hours on it. That, um, yeah, welcome to sunny south africa at the moment it's certainly in cape town it's not particularly sunny so sorry about that you no know, i that is more than okay i i, I kind of love like this this kind of gray it reminds me of where i'm from in upstate new york which is it's very gray all the time so i'm i'm very used to it it's kind it's the comforting like yeah sort of a home away from home yeah but, i don't like um, it when it's too sunny i don't like it when it's too sunny okay no no then you you hit the sweet spot that's for sure so um, but yeah, welcome. And, uh, you know, um, I've been following, you know, obviously your trajectory and it was, it was, it wasn't exactly zero to hero. You know, this is, yeah, you know, I think no. a lot of people don't know that, you know, you've been plying your trade for an extended period of time. We have, we have, uh, actually, hold on one second. They're dropping two bottles of water off of my, at my room. Give me one second. I'll Very be right good. back. Coming. Thank you. All right. Sorry, you know, gotta hydrate. Um, okay, so yeah, we we've been at this since two thousand seven, really. All right. I mean, like okay. it, technically. So my band. I mean, if you want to even go further back, you can go further back than that because my band consists of myself and my brother, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and and Adam, our drummer, and and my brother and I we've been playing music together since we were little kids, you know, but we, we formed our first band together in high school. So that was 2005, 2006. And then I moved to New York city in 2006 from my town in upstate New York. That's where I met Adam. Okay. Casey eventually moved to the city in 2007. So that's when we first started playing. We had a different guitar player at the time, um, but three out of four of us, have been the same since 2007. It's insane because <clears throat> the the real trajectory kind of came, well, not that, you know, again, it's a slow build because 2012, that was kind of when things really kind of started to shift for you. And I mean, at that point, you know, what do you do with that? Because I think, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was such an interesting time, you know, 2012, I quit my job in 2011. I was working at a restaurant. I quit my job and I, I was, I got, um, two things happened. I got a tax return that was seven, that was like $7,000 US. Uh, and I got a job um, in, I, I was acting in a musical that was going to the, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Yes. Uh, and that paid me like, two grand so i had nine thousand dollars and i i quit my job and i was like i'm gonna live off this for a for a year and i'm just gonna devote myself to music and i'm gonna see what happens mm -hmm. uh and in that year we got manager we got a manager and and uh our manager seth who's still with us today and uh he started he got us a booking agent and got us out on tour yeah so then that that leads us to 2012 when we're first starting to tour actively and uh, um, in that time, we had an EP that was a self-released EP that uh, someone just found a song, this acoustic song, uh, or like an acoustic ballad on the EP called Lee Toast, mm. uh, that they put the song on a playlist, just a random playlist on Spotify. A DJ in Virginia heard it on the radio, or heard it and then put it on the radio. Okay. And uh, that brought us some attention from some record labels. And from there, we ended up meeting with Interscope and, and Alex the Kid and his, his label, Kid in the Corner. Mm. And that's where kind of things started. But, it, you know, we didn't have our first hit, which was Renegades, until 2015, right? Yeah, yeah it's a long time. That's a yeah. long time. That's mm. like, that's a solid seven years of, yeah. of just... Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So yeah, it's been a it's been a, it's been a long journey, man. Well, so, I mean, cl- clearly you're not. You know, you weren't in a hurry, and you were you 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 had made this commitment that um, you were going to see this through. I mean, it, there must have been times that that you thought, <clears throat> you know, maybe you know, maybe it's not going to because I mean, as you know, there's you know, there's 50 billion songs on Spotify. You know, yeah. there are thousands of bands. I mean, I think it's LA is one place to try and cut your teeth, but New York even harder. And yet you prevailed. You never gave up. What was the what kept you going? Um, I think that there was like a uh, naivete that that was so valuable that comes with the territory of being young and being you know, hungry for, for that first bit of success, you know, um, that kind of propelled us forward. You know, I, I, we didn't stop because we didn't ever really, I mean, there were definitely times where it felt like a struggle and like we had, you know, we had just been, you know, kicked down and then there were so many disappointments along the way. Um, but I think we still always believed that our time was just around the corner. Okay. And, you know, honestly, it's been harder since, since we found success. I feel like I, I experience more of those doubts now as a, as a 34 year old man, I experience more of the like, well, shit, I don't even, you know, I don't know if this is, I don't know if it's going to keep happening or I don't know, like maybe I got to get a job as a teacher next, <laughs> you know, like I, I, I don't know why that happens later in life, but I, I feel like, yeah, you know, I, too much. you know, too much. Now you, I think you, you understand what failure looks like because you would have yeah. seen it all around you. And yeah. also <clears throat> you've got a lot more to lose now because yeah. you've got a lot of responsibility, right? And I also think I've recontextualized what failure really is, you know, like failure is another opportunity to start over again, to start something new. Yeah. That's exciting. You know, I, I think that I think that it being able to contextualize it again like that, it's it's almost like I have some weird I have weird moments sometimes or, or I almost wish that some some force out of my control would come into my life and take everything away. And that would give me a fresh start. You know, like, I I think we all have, have moments like that where, where we, where we kind of think that it would be nice maybe sometimes to start fresh, but I mean, I I don't don't, don't know. You say that, you say that, but throughout your career, you've, you know, you've, you claimed to be one thing and then you changed, you went in another direction. Then you did more recently conceptual work. So if anything, you know, you're certainly not playing it safe. <clears throat> you know, you're not staying in your lane. <laughs> no, I know. I can't, you know, I, I really, sometimes I really wish that I could. I see, I see these artists or I see these bands that are so good at contextualizing themselves within like the world, you know, they know what, they know exactly how people see them. They know what they need to put, how far that they can push that boundary within the context of like what people see yeah. them as. So uh, they're contrived, then it becomes contrived, which everything that you are, you're certainly not that. Thank you. I, I you know, I appreciate that a lot. I, I, I think sometimes, sometimes I worry that that's been uh, uh, something that's that's held us back from from even greater success. But then I also think about it like I think about a lot of things, and uh, it just really comes down to the simplicity of, you know, I I am the only one who gets to experience my life, hmm. and. Uh, I want to do as many things as I possibly can. And, and 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 you're doing that through your music because, you know, I mean, when I look at you know lyrically and just obviously where the triggers are, even from a from a from a musicality perspective, <clears throat> um, you are processing your reality um, you know, on multiple levels. And you know, any band that that doesn't evolve, um, you know, will die. And I think the the curiosity that I have is what are you going to do next? You know, because I don't quite know where it's going to go. And I, I, I think that's exciting. I think that's great for, you know, for a 
mean, my favorite my favorite artists always have done that. I mean, I look at like uh, I look at Radiohead as an example of of a, a band that's done that. You know, I I I love how they just don't really give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, think- yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, Tom York has admitted to that multiple times. I think up until 2014, when was it? 2004, he really didn't, he didn't care. Yeah. He started to care. But up to that point, you know, they'd released OK Computer. So I hear you, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and some, look, there, there's, there's levels to that not caring, right? Like, I care so much. Yeah. I care so much about making something that feels authentic to who I am and to who we are as a band. And I care so much about making something that feels like it's uh, pushing the boundaries for us, whether that means trying to write the best tightest pop song that we possibly could or if it's trying to write something that feels so outside of my comfort zone uh and something that that will really challenge the listener uh whatever that is in the in the moment i that's what i care so much about uh and you have a curiosity clearly because you're you're almost testing yourself but you're testing your audience's loyalty (laughs) you know and agility as well Oh, I know. Sometimes I, again, sometimes I worry to to the detriment of my career <laughs> because like I just test people. I, 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 I test them so Stop much. Doing that. Stop doing that. No, no. I, I, I absolutely right keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. And I, 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 I have to, I, I think as an artist, I, I have to just hold on to my North Star, which is uh, make stuff that that feels like it's like it's filling some sort of hole in myself and 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 also revealing things to myself about who I am. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I think that if I continue to do that, um, I'm allowing I'm allowing people in. And the more I allow people in, I think the more they're going to be able to see themselves in in what I'm making and and that connection is is really what I think we're all striving for. Well, please don't stop doing that, Sam. I know that um, our time is at a premium or yours is at a premium. Mine, I've got lots of it. Um, oh, but if, I could talk we, forever too about this shit. I really could. I think Rashika would have a problem with that and Sam would too. So, um, but thank you so much and um, all the very, very best. I think um, Cape Town will certainly give you, or well, South Africa in general, will give you even more tapestry to uh, unweave in time. So uh, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. And I also I can't wait for you to hear our next record, which is is finished now. And I think it's going to surprise you again. I, I think you're really going to. Yeah. You're a tease. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Awesome. I'm going to let you go. So I hope you, you, you feel so much better in time for when the yeah. lights go down. Um, but yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Yeah, same to you. Appreciate you.